Uh, well, so uh, George got in touch with me. Uh, I think he might have read um, one of the um, articles that I published, I think. Anyway, we, we started to have a conversation about um, art, technology, and, and future strategies and, and things like this. Um, and, and then he mentioned that they were putting this conference together and was I interested and, um, and I certainly was and, and that was that really. So, um, and then it was delayed for a little while but then when it came back on again then I was going to... Well, actually I think it's what I hoped was, was lots of uh, interested and energised people looking for, for um, answers and questions and, and, and ways to move forward and, and actually that seems to be very much what it's about. So, uh, so it's, it's been good so far. The second one I asked, oh, when we were all standing up, mm -hmm. oh, what's, is there a role for uh, physical venues uh, in the digital um, well, world? You know, it's a tricky one because um, I, I think, yes, of course there is, there is a role for it, but we've got to let it change. And currently what you tend to find is that venues tend to be... Um, you know, set in stone not only physically but in the way that they operate and what's expected of them. But that's not really working anymore and, and certainly as somebody who runs a venue I notice it in terms of age of people and the types of people that are attracted to a physical venue and even young theatre practitioners I think need to start thinking away from physicality and into something more cerebral and more to do with you know, sort of a, 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 even, even like an energy transmission and you know you don't need physicality is, is it's just changed in how we how we perceive it, and, and we, we can't pretend that it hasn't changed. Public and private, some of them are evaporating altogether. Uh, I think subsidy is an interesting one because what we're finding is that lots of spaces only exist because of their subsidy. And whilst that's fine and might represent a, a, a way of doing things, um, it's also symptomatic. So there's a problem there if if projects that we're, we're putting forward, particularly ones which are commercial in a sense, so if we're selling tickets for them, they should be able to um, finance themselves. <coughs> well, Fire Station Arts and Culture, which is the company which I run, has a, 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 a load of different projects. So one of them is the Fire Station Arts Centre, which is a, a, what you would consider to be a traditional art space across various different spaces and levels. And um, we also have a lot of internet projects from uh, digital publishing, to um, a couple of magazine projects. Um, we also have Lemonade Gallery, which is very much working with a small group of artists on um, where we go next. You know, what, is, what is 21st century art and what is the aesthetic mm. that we're looking to? So I think all of those projects fit into to what this conference is about. I think, I think there's a, there's a we, we still carry this sense of guilt with us, which we've learned. Um, about what's ethical and what's not not ethical and what makes us um, valid and what challenges that validity and, and money's kind of gotten into that mix and it's it's interesting because it's a very much um, it's quite a privileged position for the middle and upper classes to have this notion that somehow being an artist had nothing to do with earning a living um, and, and, and actually not only is that no longer relevant but as the class structures shift and change around us um, we need to sort of unlearn that one really because there is no conflict between success and economics and aesthetic endeavours. They're, they're, they're not polar opposites, they can be part of the same thing. Yeah, well, it's an interesting one I think in terms of how much people will spend on culture. I think it very much depends on where you are. So in, in, um, you know, uh, in urban environments people will often spend more than they will out in, in more rural environments. Um, I think it's most definitely the case that most people don't pay enough for culture versus what it costs to make it in the first place, whether that's an artist or a group of artists or a touring theatre production. Um, you know, most touring theatre productions, for example, would need to probably be selling at £45 a ticket to realistically represent what it costs them to make that production work, and that's ignoring how many tickets they do or don't sell. Um, <coughs> so there's a, there's a real gap there between how much people value culture and um, and how much people want culture. They're kind of sort of slightly shifting and they're not quite the same thing. So, and I think it's going to be one of the big tensions over the next 10 years, particularly as funding cuts kick in more, uh, is do, you know, do we stand up for ourselves and say this is valuable and it's worth it, or do we maybe look at what we're doing and say why isn't it valuable? Because often it's the case that because just nobody wants it, what you're making you might be telling yourself is incredibly important, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it really is. 
Um, there's a lot of really interesting dynamics going on in there. So my name's Dan Eastman and I'm the Managing Director of Fire Station Arts and Culture.